Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got a fun weekend unboxing this time. So, I decided to pick one of these bad boys up, some sort of a Fender for 280 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It is a spooky SG. That's right, we've got magical powers, and it's in a gig bag, so we should probably be scared. <laughs> Honestly, shipping in gig bags isn't as scary as it might sound, you know, with the whole angled headstock of a Gibson. As long as you pad it really well, like these guys did, we should be fine. But what is our spooky guitar in a gig bag? Oh my! It's our skeleton zoot suit. Oh man, it's so spoopy. It's a great one. So, the whole black and natural, I nicknamed it the skeleton one. You can check out the full review and demo here because about three or four years ago, I think it was around 2018, I bought a complete set for, brace yourselves, $10,000. I thought I was being crazy, spending too much money. Actually, I think it was 10,500, but it was on eBay. I had to have the complete set. And then it took me about three years to get rid of all of them because these are not the most popular guitars. But now you've got crazies listening them for 8,000 bucks, which please do not pay $8,000 for a Zoot Suit. I don't care if it's the Les Paul or the SG because they just are not worth that. So I kind of want a complete set of these in mint condition again. And I thought that's what this was going to be. However, I'm sitting in some pretty nasty scratching back here. So maybe this one isn't the one for me, but I thought this one had great color variation. So if you're not familiar with these, they are layered birch wood that has been dyed, kind of like a skateboard deck. So you get these multi, multi, multi piece necks. If I remember correctly, I think it ranges between like 48 to 55 piece necks. I mean, they're pretty substantial, right? And then since they dyed all these layers individually, sometimes you can find really dark examples. Other times you can find some light ones. I mean, they made so many different colors of these. But these are also like the SG Diablos that we were talking about. They have that carved belly to them, so kind of like a Les Paul. So, I mean, they're, they're interesting. I think I need a complete set for my museum because, you know, they're just fascinating to look at. They might not be everyone's cup of tea, but... I think they're cool, and that's all that matters in guitar collecting. Don't worry about what the people on the internet think, just enjoy the guitars that you like. But before we continue on our spooky unboxing today, let's have a word from our sponsor, which is Sweetwater. They've been a great partner to the channel over the past couple of years, and they're the best place to buy gear. I mean, you can buy Les Pauls, you can buy cables, you can buy pianos, cellos, band orchestra, anything that you need, they have it in their Fort Wayne campus, and they'll ship it to you anywhere in the US. And if you're local, they also offer music lessons, among many of other cool, fun activities. But if you're more into used and vintage gear, they also have their own marketplace. Now, it's still kind of in prototypal stages. You can learn more in this episode, but they're slowly building their own version of like Reverb slash eBay, so maybe check it out. You might find a guitar that you do want, because they've definitely changed that in the past couple of months. Oh, and don't forget to enter all their giveaways. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring tonight's episode. Let's get back to the unboxing. So our next one today is going to be lots of fun. I haven't had one of these for a couple of years now, and whenever I see one at a fair price, I have to pick it up because these are so underrated. Well, I guess to be fair, I've kind of let the cat out of the bag too many times and prices have gotten a little bit crazy on these things. But oh no, not another gig bag guitar. Oh, I am packing peanuts. Packing peanuts are okay, as long as they don't fill the entire box, because then it makes a mess when you get it out. So that wasn't too bad, but what is the guitar that I was talking about here? It's in a Fender gig bag. It must be a Fender, right? Probably not. Inside here sleeps a beautiful 1965 Gibson Melody Maker. However, this isn't just any normal 65 Melody Maker. I saw this thing on Reverb for a pretty fair price, and to be honest, it's a little bit beat up. But to be fair, most of these are. I mean, we've got some pretty serious buckle scratches back here, and we've got some dings on the neck, but these are a great way to get a Brazilian rosewood fretboard for under 2,000 bucks. Because let's face it, these are the freaky fish-shaped guitars. They're not the most aesthetically pleasing, however, I've just grown to love these goofy things because they're so lightweight. It's like getting a vintage SG that doesn't neck dive for a discount. Now, sure, you'd need to upgrade your pickup generally to get a better tone out of them, but they're usable as is. 
But I picked this one up because I had a sneaking suspicion this was not the regular cherry finish that all of these were. I thought it might have been ember red or cardinal red. I'm not really sure which one they had called it. And my suspicion was correct. This is actually a custom color. The easiest way to tell that is by looking at the side of the neck. You don't actually see the rosewood fretboard. It was painted over. So this was an absolute steal of a deal. I'm happy with this one. I love these things so much. I might just hold this one back for a while because they're cool guitars. I seriously highly suggest trying one out. You might not like the body shape, but it is my favorite melody maker. I would even choose this over the single cut 1959 melody makers. So to get one in a custom color was kind of cool. In fact, I'm going to hold this one back and uh, do a full review and demo on it because I think I need an updated take on this and having a custom color is kind of cool. Now, as far as custom colors go, it's kind of a lame one because it's hard to even tell the difference between the regular cherry. The thing that set me off is I couldn't see the wood grain underneath it. So that's pretty much the biggest difference. I mean, from a couple of feet away, you'll never really be able to tell. But these are always so resonant. <laughs> And that's why you want one of these as a bedroom player. And then there's the neck profile to them. It's unlike anything. They start off a little bit slimmer, but definitely a nice full C shape. But then by up here, they're just massive necks. It's the most comfy neck to have ever been put on a guitar, in my opinion. All right, let's see here. Any more gig bags to worry about? The especially scary thing about that U-Haul box is the fact that it was so small it actually got dropped twice waiting to be unboxed just because my kids would not accidentally knock it over so I was really scared unboxing that one but I mean they were all relatively tame falls. But the next one in here is probably the highlight of tonight's episode. The 2550 is a pretty special guitar to me. I remember my mom helped me buy my original one. We went up to a guy in Michigan, and I think at the time I had paid like $4,500 for it, which at the time was kind of crazy money for one of those, but I wanted one that had the belt buckle. I was scouring eBay for the very right one, so I found that one, and it was close enough that we could drive up. I think I had 3500 ish and then my mom kicked in the rest. That is the only guitar that my mom helped me buy as far as my big boy collection type thing but shortly after I bought my first house unfortunately I had to sell that guitar just because you know I was in family mode at that time I needed to get a house we were planning our kids but the other thing that was special about that particular one is it was one of the first 125 50s made so right here I have found another one within that series of the first 100 and honestly I think it's the first one I've seen show back up. However, unfortunately this is not my original one. I'm still looking for that one. So if anybody has serial number 72128114 please let me know. Because I remember it was a collector guy who bought it. He probably still has it but unfortunately I lost the contact details. So naturally this one actually has a pretty cool story all on its own. I bought this from the original owner, but he's just had this in his closet for the past 25 years, which is kind of how all 2550s are. In my opinion, they are not that good playing of instruments. I mean, they're all right, but even my original one, I was like, yeah, not the best, but it's cool. It's all blinged out, right? It was pretty much the first time that Gibson did an anniversary model. Now I say that with a quotation because I mean, you've got things like the 20th anniversary where they just had a special inlay, but as far as doing something crazy this is the first mass produced one i mean you can also argue hey what about the les pauls they were technically in prototype stages before this so i mean it gets a bit dicey so i always have to say everything with asterisks here but as far as the biggest one that they said hey this is limited edition you need to buy this because it's going to be super collectible this one because they made around 3411 now there's slightly more than those out there but around 4000 so they got the two-piece flame tops which was special for that day you've got things like the sustained sisters around the bridge as well as the tailpiece 
The big thing on this guy is the coil splitter switch here that they called coil tapping back in the day. So you got your Series 7 pickups and I've never really been a big fan of those. But then you got like a brass nut, the anniversary truss rod cover, the cool headstock, which is what made me initially fall in love with these and Norland models in general. My old one was within the first 50, but this one is number 53. And the big rumor behind the initial 100 2550s is that they used new old stock 60s Kalamazoo tops for these ones, and they are extra special and flamey. Now, is that true? No. It's not true at all. I highly doubt it, but it's part of the lore with these. So if you have one of the first 100 2550s, you get a small little bump in the premium value of it because it's just kind of cool. Now, unfortunately, somebody has swapped our knobs on this particular example. It should have speed knobs, so I'll have to correct that eventually. But what's even more cool about this one is we actually have some original case candy, which surprisingly, you don't usually find on these despite being like really collector's instruments. But what's really cool about this one is the fact that we actually have the original warranty card and it does match the name of the person who sold it to me. Now, obviously he's moved since then, but it has a matching serial number and his date purchased back in Miami, Florida at Ace Music. So I can actually prove that I bought this from the original owner. However, he doesn't have memory of replacing the knobs ever. So is it possible that it came stock like this? <sighs> The knobs just don't look aged to me, so I think uh, the shop might have played Swapper Rui on them. It's either that or somebody replaced the knobs when they were playing it and he didn't know. I mean, sometimes it can get kind of strange, but it's not that hard to find the other stuff. Now, unfortunately, this one does not have a belt buckle, but it definitely needs one, so I will be correcting that. So. For the time being, until I can find my original one, which I think this one might have been in better condition, I'm going to hold this back in my collection because you know, one of the first 100 is always special. But first 100 isn't good enough for me. I want to buy one of the prototypes. And now we've got a couple of small packages to unbox here. I think these are going to be a lot of fun. So this came to me from the United Kingdom. Anytime I see parts that I think I might need and they're like a fair enough price, I just go ahead and buy them. I know that's kind of a hoarder's mindset, but this actually is going to come in real handy because what is inside of this box? Some black foam. And then exactly what I ended up needing for that 2550. And I didn't even plan it this way. I bought these about a month in advance. Now these are a little bit too aged for that guitar. So I might still hunt for a better matching set. But I mean, these have got the age. But I always buy these when I can find them at a fair price because prices are only going up on this stuff. But this one I actually bought because I had made this purchase and I ended up making a bulk deal on everything the guy was selling that interested me to get kind of a, a better price. Because if you're trying to haggle, if you can buy more than one thing, it generally helps. But I'm actually starting a new collection here because I think you guys might like to see it in the museum. A Gibson belt buckle collection. Now, the only Gibson belt buckle that's worth serious money, I mean, we're talking over like 50 to 100 bucks is the 2550 belt buckle because of how limited edition it was and what it belongs to, the 2550th anniversary Les Paul in general. So stuff like this one, if you see somebody asking 500 bucks, they're, they're just being crazy. But this is kind of cool to have for my collection. But what is another belt buckle? Is this it? The legendary... 2550th anniversary belt buckle. This thing sat on reverb for such a long time. I don't understand how somebody can just take a chunk out of a brass belt buckle, but it happened. I could care less that a dog took a bite out of it. Obviously, I'm joking. A dog did not do that. And then the last one here, I've seen these around a couple of times. It's not my favorite one. I mean, this looks like it's more so like early 90s, maybe mid 90s. I mean, this really looks like kind of like what they would be giving out around 1994. It's not as cool as the Norland era style. I wasn't even around during this time, but something about the square ones that are nice and rounded. They're, they actually have that brassy color to them. They're just way cooler than these pewter colored ones. So if you happen to have any Gibson belt buckles that aren't about washing machines or other companies, feel free to let me know. I'm not paying crazy prices for these, but I think it'd be fun to have a set of them. In fact, I think these would look good up here. We're getting really close to Christmas time. I'm looking forward to the 2022 Gibson ornaments this year. But I think these belt buckles look nice up here along the edge of the wall. All right, that's the end of our fun today. 
Nah, just kidding. I got another one for you over here. So this one is from a viewer of the show that kind of just ended up turning into a peer in the market as far as, you know, we deal in similar style guitars now. And I think he said I influenced him to, you know, kind of get into guitars, the whole buying and selling. And usually when people message me that, hey, you inspired me to deal in guitars, that's not what I really want to hear. I want to hear I inspired you to be passionate about guitars so much that you want to buy every single model, experience it. And then if you have to move it on because you can't afford everything, to keep it that makes me happy but when i hear people are just like yeah i'm doing this just for the business because i saw how successful you got from it it's like I, you, you kind of miss the point i'm a crazy guitar guy i'm not the best player but i love and appreciate the models and the histories and i think this guy gets it i always enjoy seeing what he finds and if you notice he follows my packing peanut rule. Only half the box. That way there's no mess. But anyways, this time he found something after my own heart. This is a model that I already have in my personal collection, but I thought I'd pick this one up because it just happened to have a flamed neck just like my other one. So worst case scenario, I'm gonna steal the pick guard from this one so I have an error correct, but I might also play swap a Rooney. Inside here, another gold top. 12 string, funky, crazy thing. I will say this one feels lighter than my other one. However, that might be a bad thing because I can still feel the same weight in the neck. But he posted this and I messaged him. It's like, yeah, let's work a deal on that. So yeah, this one also has a slightly figured neck. However, I'm definitely going to agree with him. This one's not quite as figured as my other one. I would say this one has a little bit more of a chatoyant effect on the back of the body and it is lighter in weight, but this one's also stock and original. So I'll have to A, B comparison them later on and see which one I wanna keep, but you can find the other one on my website. All right, troglodytes, you know, even though I wasn't really trying to be too spooky this episode, I mean, we've got a 12 string, couple of gig bags, freaky melody makers, custom colors, zoot suits. The only thing that wasn't scary was the 2550. <laughs> but anyways, have a great day, guys, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.